Hey guys, RC here, back with episode 21 of Bullbound College Football. This is our American Journeyman save. So again, just a reminder, a journeyman is where you are attempting to progress through the coaching ranks, uh, starting with a low prestige team and ending up with one of the powerhouse conferences uh, and power teams in the nation. So uh, we started off with my alma mater, the Louisiana Lafayette Ragin' Cajuns. Hence my name, uh, RC. Uh, no, I do not use that as any password. So good luck, hackers, trying that one. <laughs> uh, Smith continues to lead the way for quarterbacks, just under 500 yards, three touchdowns, two interceptions. And that's even though he has not played, uh, he has not started uh, in the last two games. Uh, Ruiz, we have moved up, you saw last episode, into the starting back position. And, uh, yeah, so we'll see how that goes. Today we're going to be playing the two Florida teams, Florida Atlantic and Florida International. And then we'll also be playing Rice. Uh, if you're not familiar with Rice, they're a private school out of Houston and one of the best colleges in the country um, that nobody's ever heard of. <laughs> very good at baseball, not very good at anything else other than academics, where they are incredible. Uh, anyway, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. That makes sure you get reminders when one of these videos for Bullbound does go up live on my channel. And uh, yeah, so my all-time record, 17 and 23. Uh, so, yeah, we've got a lot of ground to make up, but we are over 500 in the conference, so that's uh, where we're making our hay right now. Uh, I am not going to adjust my uh, playbook this week because we've only had uh, two games since the change. I will probably do it after this first game. Let's get into it here. Remember, we're in fourth position. We're, we're right in the middle of the standings in the Sun Belt, I think fourth uh, but we are 11-point favorites against Florida Atlantic, who are looking for their first win of the season. So let's see how this goes. Well, when you're looking for a win, your best bet is to play the Cajuns. And Florida Atlantic is on the scoreboard with a win, thanks in part to 10 unanswered points in the fourth quarter. How many times have we seen this happen over the years? <sighs> We had a 21 to 10 lead and blew it. Blew it. And again, a touchdown with 41 seconds left. A 68 yard pass at that. That's not a way to lose. We had more first downs. They actually outgained us pretty handily. 33 carries, 133 yards rushing, four, uh, four yards a carry. So that's good. Only 10 of 30 passing. 9 of 23. Peterson did come off the bench. He was just one of seven. Uh, they combined for two touchdowns, but three interceptions. And Ruiz, 14 carries, 86 yards, and also had two catches for nine yards. Uh, uh, two catches for 18 yards uh, out of the backfield. So... I think we may have hit the uh, the right call there. Bowman, 15 carries uh, for 53 yards, uh, only three and a half. But again, we want him to play because he is by far the best potential running back that we have. And remember, he was a quarterback. So, you know, he's got to get adjusted to... Uh, to playing that position. So, but he is, you know, he's doing well. Nothing to shake a fist at, you know, all things considered. I'm not really happy with either one of my quarterbacks. Uh, let's see. All right, let's look at stats now. So, 42% for Smith, 45% for Peterson. Now, I would say. Peterson has better intelligence and instincts, so I think he certainly beats out White. Although White has slightly better accuracy and a good bit better touch, but without the intelligence, I'm really worried about that. I think we're going to put Peterson back in as our number one. 
We'll leave Smith as our third third down quarterback. That way, maybe we've got. Uh, you know what? I'm. Hmm. Let's do this. Let's put Peterson in at short yardage. Not that we want him running, but short yardage. And I don't have a third down. Short yardage, you're typically thinking third down. So what I'm hopeful, maybe going this way, is we have the better overall quarterback in most of the plays. And then we have Peterson come in when we kind of need some intelligence back there to make the right decision and balancing them that way. Maybe that will help us out. I may have already done this. I don't remember because I got sidetracked thinking about our quarterback. I'm going to do one more game with the current playbook. But what I am going to do is I want to come in here. Let's do a suggest and I'm going to keep it that way. Yeah. Also, I want to try something here. We're going to set all the defenders to 80. So that way there the starters are on the field more plays instead of 50 to 60%. So that's 2 to 3 more plays for every 10 in the you know in a drive in a game. Hopefully that allows them to rest. It could lead to more injuries. You just never know. All right, and, you know, I did all that for nothing because we're off this week. So let's go ahead and send that week while we're just talking about it. So we are now 1-2 and two in the conference, 2-3 and three overall. We're just looking for consistency. That's the problem here. Now, we're running the ball pretty well. Do I go to more of a smash mouth? running attack where we're running the ball more and we can tweak that in our playbook right i mean that's something we can tweak in our playbook but i just don't know all right so we've got a linebacker coming back so let's go ahead and do all of these but remember i want peterson as that short yardage I want smith as my every down I'm not going to change anything because we haven't done anything here. All right, now we're actually on the road, five-point underdogs. Oh, that doesn't bode well. And we lose this one 23-6. to six. Now, luckily it didn't come down to a last-second fourth-quarter score. Uh, they dominated us. Uh, we were up 7-3 after the uh, – we were down 7-3 after the first quarter. Uh, we only managed two field goals. Uh, we had double the first downs, almost 100 yards more offensively, but only 2.5 yards a carry on the ground, 16 out of 46 passing. That's a big problem. Peterson, 1 of 9. Smith, 15 of 37 with two picks. Ruiz, 5.8 yards a carry. I think we may have found something there. Bowman was five yards a carry, as was White. Ruiz, two catches, but out of seven targets. No drops, which is that means it's quarterback fault. But he did have 44 yards, 22 yards after the catch. All right, let me give some thought to what we want to do against Rice, and that'll be our next game. Um, damn, I just don't. I'm running out of ideas here, guys. And now we're one and three in the conference, two and four overall, halfway through the season. Uh, we have got a lot of ground to make up. So let me pause this and uh, kind of look at some things and we'll see what we're going to change. And uh, we'll be right back for the final game of this episode. All right, we are back. I made all the adjustments to the playbook and everything else. We have gone back to the pass-heavy attack with the sporadic runs. Hopefully that makes a difference. Yes, I could have. What are you doing, cat? <laughs> I, uh, I could have gone to a run-heavy, but that's just against my nature. Uh, so, we will see how this goes. 
Peterson will be our quarterback uh, every play, 100%. Unless he gets hurt, and we are eight point favorites at home against Rice. Come on, Cajuns, let's get this done. You remember what we said if you needed a win, you just play the Cajuns? 24 0. 24 0. And Rice gets their first win of the season. We only gain 180 yards. 19 of 63 throwing the ball with four interceptions. Now, the running game did pan out the way I wanted it to. We got 16 and a half yards of carry from Ruiz, eight yards of carry from Glover, but we only had three carries combined. Every lineman, including the tight end, allowed at least one sack, eight sacks on the game. Only only missed one field goal because that's all we tried. <laughs> and we had 19,000 fans, uh, first time over 19,000. Uh, Holt from Rice, player of the game, four tackles, three sacks, one hurry, and one forced fumble. I'm going to go look at one more thing before we end the episode. All right, depth chart. All right, Turner. Now, he's balanced, all right? Actually, you know what? Let's, let's come down to here because this will be easier for me to look at. Ratings. All right. So I definitely want Turner and Rodriguez in there. So that'll be a move that we'll do because Rodriguez is a much better pass blocker than Jeffers is, right? So then we need to put Jeffers in for Rodriguez as the backup. So we'll save that. At guard, we want Howell and Bryant. So Howell's red, but look, his pass blocking is significantly better than Parker's is. So then that means we need to take Parker and put him in as the backup on this side. And center, it would be Hickey, but he's injured. So after that, it really doesn't matter. Now, how bad is he? He's questionable, so we can't play him. So what this does is it gives us our four best pass blockers. So this is one of those examples where I kind of hadn't paid enough attention. And let's kind of go back through here again. So if we go run blocking, then it would be Rodriguez and Jeffers. And then Jeffers is five points better than Turner. At guard... It would be Richardson and Bryant. So Parker's still out, but it would be Richardson, 54. He's a better, well, he's not as good a pass blocker, but that's the thing where we would want to go in if we wanted to go run heavy. So this is where we're kind of, I want to go with this short passing attack, at least for two more games. And it may set us up for disaster on the season because we could be on seven losses at that point. But we got to, you know, you got to pick something at some point and stick to it, right? So that's what I wanted to look at. Put our best, best pass blockers in here. And I wasn't sure because I hadn't paid a lot of attention to that. But it was something I was like, in the back of my head, I was like, you know, we need to look at that. Uh, Peterson now is down to... 71%. So let's go ahead and put Smith up. And then you know what? Peterson has really stunk it up. Let's put White in as the backup. He can't be any worse. He can't be any worse. He actually has more upside still. So let's get him a little, you know, you see he hasn't thrown a pass this year. Let's get him a little development time. But we're going to go with Smith at uh, quarterback in the next game see what that does. Taking a look at the standings, we are now in sixth position. 
Two and five overall, one and three in the conference in a log jam with uh, the bottom of the barrel here. Florida International five and zero, oh, and Louisiana Monroe three and one. Of course, we end the season with them. We've already played the two Florida teams and Middle Tennessee. So who do we have coming up next episode? We've got Troy, Arkansas State and Louisiana Monroe over the next two episodes. So Troy and Arkansas State, those are basically must-win games for us to get back to 500 in the Sun Belt. We'd still be 4-5 and five with those two wins. Uh, so we're going to have to pull a non-conference win in there as well, and we're probably going to lose to Louisiana Monroe. Although they're 3-5, and five, in the conference, so it's hard to tell. Hard to tell. So, all right, three and one in the conference. So, yes, we will lose that. Three and five, they've been losing out of conference. I'm mixed up, confused. All right, guys, well, hit the like button. Number five defense in the nation statistically, but our offense sucks. So, uh, there you go. There, there's the uh, game recap in a nutshell. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget, hit that little notification bell so you get reminders when a video does go up on the channel. And we will talk to you guys next time. Have a good one. Bye.